Okay, good morning to all. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, and unlike uh, my colleague Eric, I'm here for the first time in your country, and I'm very excited about this. What I will try to do is uh, give you a very brief uh, presentation on a, uh, a guidelines that we have developed just recently. Uh, it's a tool that was actually developed to help countries, uh, all members, but also other stakeholders to understand the concept of single window and to help in the process of implementation. I would like to, to say that it's uh, actually an announcement because uh, we have only at the council session now in June adopted officially this uh, uh, instrument that has been developed for quite a few, uh, it's, it's been developed actually for about two years. So I don't think it's uh, very new to people who are actually uh, involved in developing the, the single window project. Uh, because for a, a couple of years it has been uh, available to some uh, to on, the, on an online forum uh, to all interested participants to give in and send in their comments for the development of the tool. So what we tried to do when developing this um, instrument was actually to take into consideration uh, all that was already being done. And uh, today we heard some presentations that were very interesting. And some of them, and actually I think most of them, were taken into consideration when developing this instrument. So we had in mind uh, the many experiences which are already also published on the WCA website. We have a special repository on single window on the public website. So this is available to all interested uh, um, parties. Uh, we also used the experiences uh, that were collected through a, a survey that was developed last year with the APEC Secretariat, and uh, we had managed to collect around us uh, 60 countries' experiences, which was also extremely useful. Uh, we also used uh, uh, some of the already existing uh, tools of the WCO, such as the WCO data model, the data harmonization guidelines, and of course, uh, we did some in-house uh, in research on some of the elements that needed to be uh, dealt with in more detail. But of course, we did not only concentrate on the customs. We went further on to uh, consult, uh, uh, should I say, experiences of interna other international organizations. So of course, we took into consideration the UNC fact recommendations, as well as the IMO uh, work uh, on maritime single window, and also the APEC single window implementation guide. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, this uh, single window compendium is not uh, a capacity building uh, tool, it is not a project management tool, nor does it give uh, a guidance on how to develop or introduce an IT system. We have special, uh, the WCO has developed already some tools that help in that regard. For instance, the ICT, the Kyoto ICT guidelines that can help customs uh, 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 should I say, understand what is be better to implement, uh, what type of uh, IT system to introduce into their systems. Uh, it is fully in line with the existing uh, WCO instruments, such as the WCO data model, which is extremely important in order to have uh, customs uh, systems that can talk to each other. So uh, IT systems of different uh, stakeholders uh, that can commu communicate on the same level. Of course, we took into consideration what was already developed on uh, the subject of IBM, or what we call now coordinated border management. Uh, so it includes practical knowledge on how to build a single window compendium, a single window uh, national uh, system. Uh, with the suggestion of the members, it was divided into two volumes. So volume one is uh, actually intended for uh, executive senior, senior managers and for those that are involved in uh, strategic planning. And the second volume is very practical and uh, is intended for operational managers. So I would not want to take uh, your time with this slide just to indicate that uh, both volumes actually focus on the know-how through the three different phases. So the first being incubation and strategic planning, the second one establishment and consolidation, and then we have the final phase that is development, implementation, and of course evaluation and feedback is also very important. So. This very scary slide 
oops, <laughs> is only there to give you an overview and take home with you uh, the chapters that are contained within the first uh, volume, which actually describes what is contained in the, in the volume. So what we have is actually a lot of useful information for strategic managers. Uh, first and foremost, we have an explanation of uh, the different approaches to single window. We cannot treat it in only one manner, but we have different approaches. And of course, this is very useful for the first uh, phase of uh, uh, consultation interagency consultation and strategic management. Um, in the second chapter, we deal with uh, the customs functions and how they transpose into the single window functions, and of course, what type of collaboration is needed for, uh, for implementing these uh, single window functions. Also, very importantly, uh, one of the chapters actually concentrates on single window as part of an overall uh, modernization effort, because we cannot uh, expect that a single window um, uh, can have the same effects if it's implemented on its own and not as part of a, a much wider uh, modernization effort, including introduction of risk management, post-clearance audit, as well as trusted trader programs. Uh, further on, we go on to how the political will is uh, uh, say, achieved and how we can have this on the government uh, agenda. Uh, and then after the political will is achieved, of course, we go on to uh, establishing the high-level interagency structures. Uh, then we have uh, the designing of single window services. Very importantly, dealing with legal issues is something that is very important. So how to enable authority uh, through legislation. There are privacy issues that are also involved, uh, as well as uh, um, establishing a legal framework for introducing digital document, uh, digital supporting documents, as well as uh, electronic signatures, etc. And last but not least, human resources and change management is also something that has to be very highly considered because implementing a single window project depends very much on the human resources and uh, uh, it is expected and always very much encouraged to develop a very uh, professional communication plan uh, to get this project moving. And uh, then we have uh, the uh, second volume that is intended for project man uh, for operational managers and it actually um, allows uh, uh, them to should I say, collect uh, and use the appropriate uh, parts of this uh, uh, volume in order to, to work on implementing the project. Uh, for instance, we have here the uh, integrated results of the survey that was carried out that I had mentioned uh, previously. It also has a methodology and templates for collecting functions of other border agencies. Also, it contains the data harmonization guidelines, so this is an instrument that was already previously developed by the WCO and incorporated here as well. Uh, and last but not least, uh, uh, of course, some tips on developing a business case, which, as you know, it can be crucial for obtaining uh, political will and uh, agreement of all parties uh, for carrying out the project. So this is something that uh, we put a special emphasis on. Uh, so I would just like to, to finish by inviting all those who have not been able yet to consult this very useful um, a tool. It is available to all the public. Uh, we are an environmentally, I think, <laughs> um, friendly organization and did not publish this one uh, in hard copy, but it is available, of course, on the public website within the repository on Single Window, and I would like to invite everyone to, to consult this. Thank you.